Welcome to the Villas at Rockets Landing, to our first zero energy home. Come on in. As we walk through the home, you'll notice that we're meeting all what people are looking for. Location, we're meeting lifestyle where walls can change within the house to fit the family moving in. We have energy efficiency, we have low utility bills, but this house is truly different from all other homes in this neighborhood and in Virginia. As you enter the house, you notice an abundance of lighting. They're not regular bulbs, they're not 60 watt. What these bulbs are are LEDs. They're just flat lenses that are giving out light, some at 120 degrees. So there's abundance of light throughout. It would be the lights that are above here, the lights that are behind me. All these light effectively are low energy users, something that this house loves to have. Follow me into the closet where the mechanical room is. It's something that people really don't pay attention to, but it's an important part of this house. What we have in the mechanical is the air handler. What you'll notice that with the air handler, we're actually conditioning the crawl space. And this is a pipe that goes down into the conditioned crawl. One of the other pieces that are important is the energy recovery ventilator. Our energy recovery ventilator actually filters fresh air in. It takes the air that we exhaust out of the room and it's sent back through and exhausted outside through the conditioned crawl. The MERV rating, and you wanna know, what's MERV? MERV is the quality of air that we're breathing. Hospital air is a 16. What we have here is a MERV 13. It's a better way to breathe. It helps people with COPD. It helps people with asthma. It helps people with allergies. You'll truly see a difference by coming through one of our homes and just at the time of the walkthrough, you'll notice all of a sudden, I breathe better. Another feature behind the walls is the conditioned crawl space. As I remove the cover, we'll notice that we have an interior cover with an insulation board. As we remove that, we now realize that we have a conditioned crawl. It's actually cold underneath here and it's 80 some degrees outside. We talked about that earlier with that one pipeline that was coming out of the mechanical room that's supplying air to the condition crawl. We want to make sure that it's dry, it's moisture free, and there's no termites. Well, termites need moisture, um, mold needs moisture, so we want to condition the crawl space so it won't have any of that. And how you do that is that you want to make sure that the air inside the house is not that drastically different from the air in the condition crawl. So there's no chance for a dew point level, which would give us that moisture and that mildew and that mold that we so desperately do not want. Another feature of the home is the structured plumbing. What happens with the structured plumbing, it's another feature that's behind the walls. The homeowner does not see the structured plumbing. And by structured plumbing, I mean it's a hot water system that gets you hot water quicker. It saves you as a homeowner 10,000 gallons of water that does not have to be received by you and 10,000 gallons of water does not have to be treated. It's an important feature to the municipalities and the conservation of water, but also to your pocket. It saves you about $100 a year. As I'm walking through the house, you notice that I'm within five foot of any of my fixtures. This is the kitchen fixture here. As I proceed down and we're in the condition crawl space behind the walls again with that plumbing. As we turn and we make our 90 degree turn, the whole bathroom is fed within five foot. As we move up, we have to go upstairs to catch the master bathroom, catch the washer and dryer, and to catch the hall bath. So it leads up here through the conditioned area and we're snaking it through, staying away from 90 degree turns, picking up the master bath. We're snaking it again to pick up the washer and dryer. And then we're finally taking care of the hot water in the hall bath, where the recirculating pump is located. And then it leads itself down this wall to the hot water heater. This is a hybrid system that's using a heat pump to supplement the heat ability of the elements within this system. So it means that we're saving 70% in usage. It also is a smart hot water heater, which is kind of neat because 
when you push a button and you have family coming over for the weekend and for the week, you can do high demand. If you're going on vacation, you can put this one on vacation. It's just a showcase of benefits and it only utilizes $162 worth of electricity a year. One system, but quick water that saves you on water consumption and conservation. We talked about the structured plumbing. We talked about how the lines are run through the house, what's behind the walls. But this is actually a button that you touch. What this button does is gives you the hot water when you need it. Again, as I said before, it saves you and utility costs, and it saves in the use of water within the house, close to 10,000 gallons of water per home. We'll truly talk about what's behind the walls. It's an interesting product. It's called Neopore and Polyurethane Wall Tight by BASF. It's the HP Plus wall system. It's the framework of this home. It's what makes the home have higher energy value. It's what makes the house, home improve its air quality. It has superior durability and one of the most important pieces, year-round comfort. It's a product that we can build within a two by four wall for the first time. Otherwise, to get this type of insulation value, which is an R22, we would have to build it on two by six walls. So it's more square footage inside for you, the home buyer, with the quality of the home that is beyond any other home on the marketplace. Another feature of this home are the windows. In a normal home, we use, utilize an R2 window, which means a double pane window. It has a reflective coat on it. But this window that we're utilizing in the healthy home is actually an R5 window, which means triple panes. It still has the double low E and the argon filled for reflectivity. But this one is unique in itself, that it's, it's what we call in the building industry the holy grail. Being able to bring a window in that doesn't cost a fortune, that we can supply to middle income buyers. It's a win-win situation. Another bonus feature of this home is the quietness. What happens is, is we see, because of the triple plane, we see the cars going by, but we don't hear the cars. It's a neat, neat feature, and we welcome you to come by and experience this too. Another feature in this home that's not behind the walls is the solar panels and the inverter in the garage. The solar panels on the roof in this home, this net zero home, is a 6.8 kW system. There's 24 285 watt panels on the roof. They're attached by three wires. What's neat about it is that there's no moving parts. So the roof design that we utilize, the pitch, the pitch of the roof, whether it's a 612 pitch or a 712 pitch, as depicted in this drawing, what we're looking at is we're looking at the optimum tilt of the, of, of the roof for the sun exposure for the panels to work very efficiently. And to do that at 98% efficiency is through the use of the pitch of the roof to get that optimum tilt. That optimum tilt is decided upon by the longitude latitude of where we're building at. So it's a lot of numbers coming through, but in this area, in the city of Richmond right now, it's right at 33% or an 812 roof. That's a big feature in the, just the design of what we do. But the roof's move, the house layout stays like it is. But depending on where we're sitting within the community, which lot that you purchase your home on, we actually turn the roof so we can get the south, southeast exposure for the solar panels so that can optimize their production. The PV system itself, as I was saying before, has three lines, three wires that are coming down. So no moving parts, no water moving through it, just three wires and it's DC power, the same power that you use in your car. It goes into an inverter, and when we move into the garage, which we will now, and talk about it, you'll see that the inverter sits on the wall, and we have three lines coming through, which are enclosed by a cable, and those lines come in as DC power, and it converts it to AC, which is electricity that powers the home. 
down into the garage, another feature that's not behind the walls that we can see and showcase is the inverter. And you'll notice that we have a circuit breaker box that controls the home, and we also have a circuit breaker box in case power goes out. And how that works is that the inverter converts, as we were talking about earlier, the DC power into AC or electricity. And it goes into the inverter box, converts it over, and sends it back to the main breaker. We have dedicated lines that are going back to the sub-circuit breaker box. How this works, it's interesting because we're on a net metering program with the with Dominion Power. With Dominion Power, if the power goes out and we have a storm, what happens to the electricity in the house produced with the solar? Well, the inverter is a smart inverter, so it shuts down because we don't want to be sending electricity through the lines because it's a net metering program that could affect the linesman repairing the lines. So the smart inverter shuts itself down. Now the new solar edge storage inverter does, takes it another step further. And that's what we're all about, taking that next step. What it does, it has a little black box in it. And that what that black box does, it realizes that the power's out, but it allows the inverter to turn itself back on, not allowing any electricity to be moved off campus to leave. So during the daytime, if there's an outage, you can operate dedicated circuits. The dedicated circuits may be the refrigerator, the lights, the TV, the microwave. But at night, it's still going to go out. The storage inverter allows us to plug in when it becomes available, a storage battery, whether it's the Tesla battery or whether it's another one. Right now, the return on investment on this product here with the 6.8 kW system is about eight years, four months. And when you add in the energy efficiency side, the ultra energy efficiency build on this home, and you look at that return where your utility bill is a zero averaged over the year, and you only have $163 in service charge, what that does, it equates to a savings of over $50,000 in 20 years. That's money that you'll see that'll add to your discretionary income. We're now at the outside of the home, what I call is the ninth wonder of the world. It's watching a meter move in reverse under the net metering program. So we're actually producing electricity as we sit here right now, and the dots on the meter are going dot, 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 in reverse. We're sending power back to Dominion to be credited when we need the power in the summertime and when we need the power in the wintertime when we're heating and cooling the house and our power bill will go up. Remember, as I said before, a net zero home is net zero cost over a one year period. So there'll be some spikes up and down, but over the full year, it'll be a zero energy cost.